Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we're going to continue our Class AB amplifier series with a walkthrough of Class A, B, and Class AB amplifiers. Let's dive in! Believe it or not, there really isn't a video here about three separate amplifiers. There aren't three separate conversations. Rather, it's more of like one conversation and a spectrum of amplifiers. Let me explain what I mean. With a Class A amplifier, there's some form of a current source, whether that be a resistor or something more complicated, and a transistor. That transistor is responsible for choosing how much voltage ultimately gets applied to the output. There's only one issue with that system. That means that whatever power isn't going through the load must be dissipated by that transistor. So the current through it is constant. There's a constant amount of power flowing regardless of if the load needs it or not. That is not ideal. That means that you're approaching 0% efficiency at light load. Well, I guess you're always doing that no matter what it is, but that it's usually more of like a math glitch and not a constant power dissipation. But anyway, I'm semantics. Let's move on. Let's think back to our short project building a simple common emitter amplifier. That common emitter amplifier is a very rudimentary, low power, technically class A amplifier. Why is it class A? Well, let's look at the schematic. We can clearly see two elements, a current source, in this case that's a 1K resistor, and second is that transistor, Q1, which is controlling how much energy is sent to the load. In this example, the maximum output current is approximately 12 milliamps, which means applying any load won't work very well. Like we almost saw two years ago, wow, time goes fast, two years ago, the signal quality of a Class A amplifier is great. I mean, just look at that sine wave. Not only that, but the frequency response was also very good. I mean, for a constant input amplitude at different frequencies, a Class A amplifier does a great job of amplifying all of those frequencies equally with low harmonic distortion. In summary, we like Class A amplifiers for their electrical performance, but they have a non-ideal characteristic, that they require steady state current flow inside the amplifier when there's no output current. If a Class A amplifier needs to provide a 5 amp output current, that means that there's always 5 amps flowing through the amplifier, even if none of that is going to the load. In other words, it has a very low output efficiency and gets very hot. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if thermal limits or heat is the reason why Class A amplifiers tend to be either low power or physically huge. Let's look at the other extreme, a Class B amplifier. This is the other extreme because it's a transistor amplifier that features zero, and I mean zero, steady state current flow through the output transistor. In this case, we're talking about a so-called complementary class B amp with two output transistors. There's an article I liked on ResearchGate, which I've linked in the description. There are many articles written on amplification available online, so definitely dive in if you're looking for a deeper understanding. Unfortunately, I really just can't cover everything there is to know about class A, B, and AB amplifiers in this video. Anyways, class B. There is no steady state current required in this type of amplifier, but that comes at a cost, signal quality. Class B amplifiers exhibit something known as crossover distortion. That isn't something super unique to this transistor circuit, and it ultimately comes down to the nonlinearity of transistors when the base current approaches zero. It takes a pure sine wave and turns it into something that looks more like this. Yeah, that isn't great. Actually, that, that isn't even good. If we're only looking near the peaks, sure, a Class B amplifier output looks pretty sinusoidal. Collector current is zero, efficiency is significantly improved at the cost of this crossover distortion. Remember that bottom part of the transistor base emitter characteristic curve? Yeah, that one. Um, that crossover distortion comes from the major nonlinearity from 0 volts to about 0.7 volts applied at the base of a transistor. To state that again in different words, because a Class B amplifier is biased with both transistors normally off, we introduce some nonlinearities when the output voltage approaches 0 volts out. This is where the name crossover distortion comes in because you're crossing over the 0 volt point. If you're following along and haven't fallen asleep yet, you might see where this is going. If we smash a Class A amp, and a class B amp together, we get class AB. So then, what's this class AB amplifier? Well, on the surface, a class AB amplifier looks a lot like that complementary class B on the surface, but they're different because they're biased differently. Class AB amplifiers are biased such that there's a small quiescent collector current. Ideally, this is just 
barely enough current to avoid those nonlinearities near zero volts. In practice, this becomes a design trade-off between efficiency and signal quality. The efficiency of that class AB design really depends on the designer, but is commonly found in the range of 20 to 60% efficiency, depending on output power. The most efficient class AB amplifiers will start to feature some crossover distortion, like a class B. The least efficient class AB amplifiers will pass a lot of quiescent current, more like class A. The slight DC bias sets the transistors higher on their characteristic curves, setting them both above that approximately 0.7 volt major distortion. Okay then, I think we're getting towards the end of this short video, just highlighting the major differences between class A, B, and AB amplifiers. And I've got to say, this is a terribly short video that misses a lot of details. The world of amplifiers is huge with even more classes, optimizations for different power levels, and more. Definitely dive into the many articles, videos, the wealth of information available online if you'd like to get more depth. If you've liked this video and can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, and leaving a comment down below. A special thanks to our channel members, I really appreciate the extra step of supporting us directly. Coming up soon, we'll be discussing how we biased our Class AB amplifier and discuss gain of power amplifiers. I can't wait! Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching it for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!